was a little girl I had the world I didn't understand It's all out of my head For me, acro yoga is being in the moment with another. I find when you're upside down or connecting with a person, there's a freedom that nothing else matters in that moment but what you're doing with that person. Creating something bigger than you can on your own with one or more people. Co-creation. There's something really beautiful about that. These rules, I seem to be tripping on my own feet. I get ahead of myself. Realize I leave. I could take it one step at a time. I think I'll be just fine. I seem to be tripping on my own feet. I get ahead of myself. Realize I leave. If I could take it one step at a time, I think I'll be just fine. As an adult, we often forget how to play. We often forget our childlike sense of creativity and of curiosity. As a kid, everybody plays in bird, they play in airplane, and you know, that beginning step kind of brings you back to something that you did in your childhood, and it helps you connect with so many other people. The act of balancing on someone else's feet, like logically, there is no reason to do that. <laughs> Apart from it, it feels fun and you can learn and it feels good to learn new things. There's something amazing about the natural high that you get from acro. You get the adrenaline of doing like fun tricks, you get the oxytocin from people touching each other, you get the endorphins from moving your body. I think it really gave me an appreciation for all the things that our bodies are capable of doing. This is such a neat blend of extreme physicality, creativity, and heart. Vancouver Acro Festival is an opportunity to play. play. As in play! <laughs> it's a really good opportunity to get into your childlike state again and laugh and be silly and try new things that you didn't think you could do. Everyone needs more play in their life. I'm comfortable with who I am and I'm not scared to be who I am. No one's judging me here and just accepting me for who I am, which is really hard to find sometimes. Yeah. Vancouver has a thriving acro community. We have two teacher trainings here. We have two festivals a year, a winter and a summer festival. And they're really great opportunities uh, to have the entire community come together and invite outside communities into Vancouver. Every year at the festival, we focus on highlighting Vancouver's growing base of teachers, but we also work at bringing new and exciting teachers in from out of town to offer new perspectives, new skills. We have games, workshops. We've got all ages. We've got people over 60 coming and playing, and we've got toddlers playing. It's just a, a weekend of great fun. Great fun. Great just fun. the greatest of fun. The greatest of fun. We really work at creating an inclusive environment where advanced and beginner people can play together, can skill share, can help each other develop acro skills, but also just find new ways to connect and develop new friendships, relationships, connections, feelings. <laughs> feelings. <laughs> feelings. Who here learned or did something for their first time this weekend? Amazing! <laughs> My God. That's basically what we want to do here, is just expand and grow and share together as community. I think we live in this world where, from a young age, you're taught to respect everybody's personal space, and you, a lot of people take that to heart, and they fear that touch. They fear, you know, getting in someone's space and invading that space. And I think acro yoga takes us to a safe place where there's invited touch, and you communicate what is safe touch and what is not safe touch um, in a platonic way that doesn't necessarily have to be intimate or romantic or sexual. When I started acro yoga. I was like, oh my god, like, I'm just getting touched everywhere. So it was a little bit hard at the beginning, I would say, but after two, three classes, you start just thinking about technique, about movement, you just forget about everything, and it's definitely that feeling of you're not alone, and you are with a community, you're with a family, and you get that support physically, emotionally, and mentally in all the aspects. 
I think the support and connection is built into the practice. You know, you have to have trust, you have to have communication. You're involved in acro yoga for an extended period of time, say six months, a year, then you notice that certain aspects of your personality have changed. So you become more open, more communicative, and more patient. <laughs> Yeah, acro yoga requires patience. <laughs> In our day-to-day -day lives, we're often taught to suffer through it, I think, sometimes, and to just, like, buck up and deal with it. Whereas in Acro Yoga, we really encourage you to speak up for what it is that you need or what it is that you want to explore or what you're looking for. And so learning how to be like, um, this doesn't feel nice, or can we try it this way? If you practice that in the, the safe setting of a guided acro yoga class or a jam or workshop, it starts to leak into your outside world. And then you're able to ask your family, your friends, your partners to be like, this is what I'm needing to make this feel better or to find more comfort and ease in, which is like where the two start to bridge and the acro yoga part starts to like come off the mat, as, you, as we say, like take your yoga off the mat. Many of the negative aspects of our society come from a lack of communication or a lack of intimacy. Even though people talk about a more interconnected world, people are more isolated than ever, and communities like this and activities like this show people that they can be themselves and share these aspects with other people. Because inherently, acro yoga is a very silly activity, so it gives people a chance to not be so serious and rigid and just kind of let their freak flag fly a little, <laughs> which I think is another thing that brings like-minded people together. And then for people who aren't used to putting themselves out there a bit, this gives them an outlet. I think it's really important as well for us all to remember that acro in itself is not good. It is not good or bad, actually. And it's up to the teachers, the leaders, the people that facilitate space to bring in the intention towards positive communication, the intention towards safe practice, boundaries, and it's important to remember that distinction as we continue to grow the practice and as it starts to really take off and more and more people get involved in it. You need to feel it and experience it in your body to really believe that you can do it because we see things and we instantly have doubt that we, that we can't. I would never have tried Acro if I had have known what it was or because I would have thought I could, can't do that. But then by chance I did an acro yoga class and fell in love with it. And so through that, then acro is spreading because once you try it, then you want to keep doing it. That's why we're all here and that's why there's people from all different parts of the world. <laughs>